Hello everybody, uh, my name is Richard Barton and welcome to my depiction of a London Brighton South Coast terminus in the Victorian period. I always prefer, if possible, to model a prototype and Hailing Island was the only terminus that I had space for. The island was connected to the mainland by the thousand feet long timber Langston Bridge and the weight limit meant that the a line was best known for the Brighton Terriers, which ran the service from the 1890s through to closure in 1963. In 1872, the London, Brighton and South Coast Railway took over the services from the contractor. Until recently, the only known photo of the terminus prior to 1900 was that from the National Railway Museum. This depicted a pretty little short Stuart tank engine, Hailing Island, with four early coaches. In 1878, a second locomotive, Sharp Stewart Tank Fratton, arrived on the branch. This is modelled as Bishopstone, which was photographed by earlier working on an extension to New Haven Harbour. Its dumb buffers mean it is relegated to goods working on the layout until I can build Fratton. No photograph of Fratton has survived, so the modifications for passenger working will need to be guessed. Other locomotives must have visited the branch from time to time as cover for the two branch locomotives, but no details are known. This is the frustration of modelling the earlier period though the advantage is no one can prove you wrong. I recently acquired two early Brighton locos from Guild member Bob Sankey. Sievert was seen shunting the coal wharf and now Lewis has arrived with a train of early London South Western coaches. After arrival, it is shunted the coaches into the siding behind the platform and departs as a light engine. The station building at the terminus was unique and quite complex to build. The upper floor of the two-storey section housed a tank for the station's water supply. After 1900, the awning was doubled in length when the siding behind the platform became the bay platform. One fascinating discovery was that for 14 years from 1888 
young oysters were shipped from Whitstable for overwintering in oyster beds on Hailing Island. They were then dredged up in the following spring and returned to the better growing waters in North Kent. About 1890, it is known that Kitson built tank Bogner, as modified by William Stradley, spent some time on the branch. Passenger traffic on the branch was always much more important than freight, and the limited freight traffic was carried in mixed trains, not possible to replicate as the sector plate is far too short. In the early 1890s, four terriers were shedded at Fratton for the South Sea and the Hailing Island services. Gypsy Hill arrives with a four-coach set of Stradley coaches, at the front of which is a special working from the South Eastern Railway, containing a first-class saloon, an open carriage truck with a landau and a tiny horse box. The developer, Francis Fuller, was responsible for the completion of the Hailing Branch, which helped visitors to the horse races he initially organised. Modler's licence has ensured that these race meetings continued into the late 1890s, and Terrier Bishopsgate is seen with a special containing horse boxes from various companies. Bishopsgate had an interesting history. It was given to me by the late Peter Corrison, but was originally scratch-built and painted by Bernard Miller. It was always a London engine, but runs to Hailing Island in memory of a much-missed friend. There was a report in 1904 that the LB and SCR were intending to strengthen Langston Bridge to take mainline trains. That never happened but it hasn't stopped me sometimes running of some of my larger Brighton engines in defiance of the weight limit. Stradley D1 Ditchling, with special head code, is seen with a director's inspection train. And a Stradley Jumbo number 423 is seen on a goods working. I very much enjoyed building Hailing Island and hope you've enjoyed watching it. The layout acts as a showcase for the variety and different types of train I enjoy building. A far greater variety than would have been seen at Hailing Island in this period. However, although the Terrier is by far my favourite locomotive, more and more I'm going further back in time because I really enjoy that earlier period and it's rarely modelled.